SHIP has been involved in Mendelia through the hospital since SHIP started back in 2009. Um, Candy Fenske, who is the CEO of the hospital, has been involved in our community leadership team. And so that was really kind of our step in into the community. Um, and since then, we've been able to have a partnership with the school, um, with Tony Downs Foods, doing worksite wellness, and the hospital, as well as the Medelia Community-Based Collaborative. SHIP has been very good to work with. It's easy to work with. Um, we've had members from the, the state level come down and visit with us and and talk about you know things that we may look at or um, just they have been interested in what we're doing and so it, it feels good to have that collaboration. The best thing about working on the Medelia based collaborative project is you can see actual growth, actual movement and you were really making a difference in the community or being able to fill the gap we have faculty and students have a lot of energy and when they come into the community, some of the community members, you don't really realize what you have here and the potential that you have in the community. When outside members come in, they can really help ignite some energy behind the project. So the collaborative, Medelia Community Based Collaborative is made up of a whole conglomeration of people. We have professors, teachers from Minnesota State University, Mankato. We have community members, um, the principal of the elementary school. We have an elementary student from the, from the county. We um, also have from the ministerial association, we have uh, one of the members from that, hospital employees. There's a large portion of the community that is obese and obesity leads to can lead to diabetes and, and heart disease. And so we figured out that we needed to tackle that problem. And we, we decided the easiest way to do that um, was to start with the kids. Kids are very impressionable. And so we um, formed the collaborative to reduce sugary beverage intake. And we just want to um, uh, offer more healthy beverage choices and get the kids to know what, is, what are more healthy beverages. That idea was really taken from the needs assessment. So looking at cancer, heart disease, and diabetes as top concerns in the community, what are some strategies that could potentially impact those conditions? One of the ideas that came forward was to look at a campaign to reduce consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages. Um, and that can involve soda, it can involve chocolate milks, um, really because basically anything with added sugar. Part of the MCBC Collaborative, we, they suggested uh, doing a poster contest for, with our elementary students. And uh, I contacted our teacher, uh, Mrs. W, and uh, asked her about doing that at the beginning of the year and she was excited and we went with it. And what the kids have done is they have drawn a poster that has to do with how you think what you're drinking. And we also talked about um, some of the things that have to do with what are you putting in your body? Is it healthy? Is it not healthy? They have a, I think they've had a blast with the, with the poster contest because it allows them to be creative, uh, the freedom to pick um, kind of what they want to put on the poster and, and looking through the posters, there's lots of different things from from connecting it with sports to connecting it with um, maybe a hobby that they have. And so they appreciate having that um, freedom to, to pick and choose what to put on there. So I, I, they've had a lot of fun with that. We made this in art. I was thinking about water, so I put a pool because it made me th thinking about water. And then Mountain Dew, but I X'd it out. My poster is here because I like rethink your drink and if you well if you drink pop then it's not good for you so you should really drink water like I have from a faucet or put it in the fridge and make it cold. People started drinking more water after we made them. I really like water because it's really healthy for you and it has no sugar in it. It's really good because it's really natural and you can put fruits or vegetables in it so it can have a little bit more taste. And I drink milk before I go to my football games. I've never drank pop, but I've just had a few sips from my mom's cup. I don't really think I drink that much pop. Rethink Your Drink is probably has reduced it because now they're really thinking of what they're putting in their bodies. They're really deciding, you know what, this is not such a great deal. What it does to you, especially what it does to your bones, 
as far as the carbonation, it really does a real big thing on your bone marrow. And I'm pretty sure that Ms. DeMera has talked about that to the kids in their Phi Ed class. I'm a big believer in not only teaching them reading and math, but also teaching them how to make good decisions. And this fits right into that in, in helping them learn to look at things, analyze, and make a good informed decision, which, you know, they'll take that skill with them the rest of their lives. Passing it on to their parents, you know, in the grocery store, you know, asking, can you buy, buy some water, buy some bottled water instead of the pop? We don't need the pop. And, you know, trying to get the kids to change the habits of the whole family, parents and, and included. Active Living, we've been working with the Medelia Active Living Coalition, which was actually born out of the SHIP um, grant. And they have been successful at really engaging the school with Safe Routes to School um, and combining the Safe Routes to School work with the community work. Active Living is um, where we try to get the people, the children, all the families and everything more active uh, so that they aren't coming home sitting on the couch. Uh, trying to establish walking, biking trails. We had uh, walk to school, bike to school days uh, with the rest of the United States we participated. Had really good participation with that. The bike path was an idea of the Active Living Coalition that um, children and adults would have a safe walking and biking path in Medulia and noted that the old Highway 60 was not marked and had parking alongside, which made it dangerous. So we went to the Medelia City Council and um, petitioned along with um, Roger Reeser, the county um, engineer, that we could have um, markings and signage for a bike path. Looking at ways that they can create some connectivity between the community um, assets. So, one of the things that they just had accomplished was extra lighting and a new trail that was put up between the hospital, which connects the hospital, the um, high school, Tony Downs Foods, and the recreational um, parks and rec in Medelia. So we were able to, through the SHIP grant, write an innovative application um, to the Department of Health. And we're funded to really look at how do we increase access to healthy beverages um, by working with different organizations such as Tony Downs, looking at their vending machines, do they have water available, is there education to the employees about the types of beverages um, and the amounts of sugar that's, that um, they have in the beverages. Since we've, we've worked with Tony Downs since um, the beginning of SHIP for the most part. We've been able to work on developing a comprehensive worksite wellness policy that incorporates things like tobacco-free grounds, also looking at improving um, physical activity opportunities. Well, basically we're getting together every month, uh, some workers and me and some coordinators, and we talk about the needs, what they need, what they want, and we've been doing this health awareness program every month. For example, we did blood pressures last month, and we're gonna be checking cholesterol and glucose and we're also going to be making them learn about, for example, birth control, STD. We're going to talk about WIC. We're going to talk about a lot of programs that they said that they were interested in knowing about. Many of the people that are working here don't understand how to go to a doctor, who you should talk to about a specialist, how to take care of themselves. Some don't understand what cholesterol and triglycerides are. Some didn't under, we've discovered diabetics, didn't they, they didn't know that they were diabetic, they had no idea what the symptoms were. So education is a big factor. We tell them what to look for and to prevent it, you know, what you should eat, what you shouldn't eat, how to exercise, things like that. Well, basically right now we've just done blood pressure and we're going to start educating about glucose and cholesterol, why is it important to check it and what to do if it's high or low. And we also talk to them and they talk among themselves, which is really good to see what they needed, what they wanted. So, and we also did the garden. This garden project, we talked what they wanted to grow. We're trying to make them grow their own vegetables. And we had 10 different seeds. So we brought the pots, the soil, and they got to choose. And it was really fun and talking about how they grew and everything was really, really good and they share their vegetables. So that was really interesting. I stay in the program wellness and we like to invite the people to explain everything about the barrel we planted. And we have a, like a garden outside. We don't want to make a big garden, but we like to explain to the people 
we grow in like a two seed or three seed in the same barrel and it was growing good and we have tomatoes and also cucumbers and it's about 60 people they butter the barrel it was everything inside and also the planted tomatoes the jalapenos and different kind of stuff they seem to like it um, we have in this plant we run uh, a health and wellness committee and once a month they get together and they discuss what they'd like to learn. So um, obviously we did a garden because they wanted to learn how to grow vegetables and we wanted to teach them what's the healthy vegetable, which, which vegetable should you be eating. The healthy was good That's because when somebody has had a problem, we let us know to the supervisor and they take to the office and help. Whatever problem we have, uh, they help you and take like a therapies or something to help us. You know, we're um, part of the Medelia community and we need to give back. And giving back to our employees, who obviously live in this community also, is just one way of doing it. We're talking about the importance of um, drinking water or not soda pop. I'm actually doing right now is a lot of drinks that Mexicans have. They're not all from here. So what I'm getting is how much sugar they have and also they have it in metric system, so I'm changing it so they understand exactly how much it is here. So they can actually see it and visualize, well here it is, because sometimes they think tea. Well, it's not the natural bag, they buy the bottle and that has a lot of sugar, so we're trying to show them how much actual sugar is in it. I, was, I have lived in Mendelia my whole life. I was born and raised here and it's good to see the changes that are happening, they're, it's slow, but they're happening. Uh, the change in the kids' activity, kids walking to school, riding their, riding their bikes to school, reaching for water instead of the sugary beverages. Um, it's happening, it, and it's good.